Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a custom video for Alexander. All right, let's get right into it. He writes, Hi Austin, big fan of yours. Love your channel and watch it religiously. I'm looking for your opinion and feedback on my collection. I've been a Rolex fanboy for over 25 years now and want your opinion on my last Rolex you would recommend. I'm just on the fence as to which GMT I should get. I do love the old pre-ceramic ones, but I don't have anything modern in my collection. All right, so we're gonna answer his question, but first let's take a look at what he has in his current collection. Number one, my first Rolex, which I got back in 1991. He writes here, wedding watch. So I don't know if he got this in celebration of his wedding back in 1991, if he wore it to his wedding, if it was a, a wedding gift. It's a two-tone black sub 16803. This is my daily, and I've played around with changing the bezel colors and rubber B straps. This is my everyday tank watch. Maybe I'm just too used to it, he writes. And this is a 1991. So if it was made the year prior in 1990, it would be an E serial. If it was made the year he got it, it would be an X or an N serial. It's got a tritium dial, holes case, hollow in link bracelet and as you can see he has fun changing it around it looks like a, a kermit here here it has a red bezel that actually looks really cool this is not something i would do i like to keep things original i'm a bit of a stick in the mud a bit of a purist a bit conservative when it comes to this kind of stuff but as long as you keep the parts no harm done this has to be wow he's had it for what 30 years and it's his daily wear has got that connection to his his marriage so this has to be a really important watch for him so excellent all right number two explore two black dial 16570 this is a 40 millimeter explore two love this watch but sadly my daughter has taken it and made it her own she's changed the strap to a rainbow nato looks good on her this was a present from my father, and when he passed, Yumiko, my daughter, wanted it, so I couldn't say no. Sometimes we trade, though, and looking at it, yeah, um, NATO straps are another thing that I'm not a big fan of, but it's a cheap way to give your watch new life, sort of uh, give it a new wearing experience, uh, so no harm in it. And uh, this is a Swiss-made dial, so it would be a 1999 or later watch, an A serial or later. Can't tell if it has a holes case and I can't see the bracelet and that can always give an indication as to the year. But a lot of sentimental value with this watch came from his father who has since passed and his, his daughter has it now. And keep it, don't mess with it. But for anybody out there with a 40 millimeter black dialed Explorer 2, you can have the dial change. And, and that would actually look kind of cool on your daughter probably. I think white dialed watches look really cool on women. I'm not saying you should do this, but I'm just saying that would look kind of nice. Uh, don't don't molest it. it. Came from your dad, you know, the, the sentimental value. And uh, by the way, on a side note, the polar white dialed, 40 millimeter Explorer 2s here in Japan go for about a thousand dollars more and uh, would it be cost effective if you had a black dial to change it well that's a really expensive operation that would be well the service cost of just having it done would be $250 assuming you're not going to have it done during an overhaul you got to pay for the dial that'd be 600 USD plus the new hands because the hands aren't the same that would be 200 plus and then here in Japan to get back the older dial would be 40% of 600. So you're talking an operation that will cost about 1,500 USD just to change it out. So it really wouldn't be cost effective if you're just looking at it from the, the money point to go from black to white. And it certainly wouldn't if you're talking about going from white to black. Uh, so anyway, just a bit of a side note there. Yes, excellent watch to have in the collection. Great that she's enjoying it. Number three, one of my favorites is my Daytona white gold 116519 gray dial leather strap. I did change the strap to a black rubber B as I don't wear leather that much. And he's a real, that's a, a strap change in family there, all right? Um, which is fine. 
Now this is a beautiful Daytona, white gold. Love the Arabics, love the red accents. Very nice, very nice. And, uh, and of course it doesn't have the, the ceramic bezel, it's got the metal bezel, which is something that I didn't like until the ceramics came out. And then I started sort of appreciating the, the metal bezeled Daytonas, so excellent. Number four, Milgauss, white dial, 116400. This is my only no-date watch, but again, a fun watch. I changed the strap to an orange rubber beat. Looks fantastic in my opinion. Fun summer watch as well. And I'm surprised your daughter hasn't nabbed this too because this could look really good on her. It's kind of, you know, it's funky because it's got that uh, lightning second hand and those orange accents. I think Paris Hilton had or has a Milgauss, so I'm surprised she hasn't gotten her hands on it yet. And it's a white dial. It would look really good on her. Now, um, the white dial is my favorite version by far, and I think that's a future classic. I think it's really underappreciated right now. I think people are sort of focused on the GV glass versions, which I don't think are the I don't think they're the ones to have, in my opinion. The the GV versions are great, and and, and the, the Z Blue is really cool, but if I wanted to get a, a Milgauss, this is where I would be putting my money. And, you know, once you have something that's discontinued, it's sort of, it's, it's, it's neat. You appreciate it a little bit more because, you know, they're not going to ever make any more again. And so this is a great Milgauss to have. Number five, last summer I purchased a Grand Seiko Sakura SBGA. 413 Sakura, by the way, are cherry blossoms, and it looks to, yeah, have a kind of a red uh, or pinkish rather tone to it. So, very interesting. I always wanted a Japanese watch, and this came up. I also have a vintage Seiko 6138 UFO JDM, and that means a uh, Japanese domestic model from my father. I found it, again, after 20 years lost. It's a big watch and still works great. It was bought back in 1974 by my mother and given to him. Cool story there. Again, my daughter has taken it for her own. I don't mind, though. All right, so he's got a vintage Seiko. He's got a grand Seiko. Uh, vintage Seiko, again, great to have. Incredible family connection. So, um, Keep that in the family, I'm sure you will. It's already gone to your daughter, she's enjoying it. And it sounds like she she appreciates the connection, the family connection to these watches. So looks like these watches are in good hands. So that's a good thing. It's always nice when the second generation, the next generation appreciates uh, uh, the sentimentality of these watches. And then you've got your uh, Seiko Sakura, the Grand Seiko. Wearable watch, really cool and uh, great for the Hanami. So. Man, if you come to Japan and you hit the hit the, the the parks and have Hanami, that's the watch to wear. Number six, my birthday watch came a little earlier this year. This fell into my lap, so I couldn't pass it up. Day Date Platinum President, 118206 with light blue dial in 36. And it means 36 millimeter. For me, the 41 and 40 millimeter versions looked too big on my wrist, or I should say the dial looked too big. This is also the heaviest of all of my watches. I put it away till my birthday on February 28th of next year before I can start wearing it. All right, something to look forward to. It is also the year of my daughter's birth, the year 2000. All right, so your daughter's 21, so at the age of 21, she's got a lot of good watches already. And uh, all right, so nice fancy sort of uh stealth wealth watch because again this is either platinum i missed it i think it is platinum yeah and uh wow it's either platinum or white i'm pretty sure it's platinum and i don't know that they make this blue dial anymore i know some of the these blue ice dials were discontinued recently so this could be a neat watch to have i totally agree with you 36 millimeter date justs or, or date dates in this case i think those are the better more iconic ones to have they fit me better it really depends on the person i mean i'm not going to say we got to stick with the icon you know 36 millimeter day dates or date justs. it really depends on the person for me 36 millimeter 
Uh, that's the way to go. It looks like it's fitting your wrist perfectly there. I don't think date justs should be too big. I think they should be relatively unobtrusive. And again, this is a precious metal watch, but it's white. And again, I'm, I'm like 99% sure it's, it's platinum we're talking about, but whether you're talking platinum or white gold, it's, it's just great that these sort of fly under the radar. And uh, very nice birthday present to look forward to. All right, and uh, there you go. That's his collection. Beautiful collection. And the question at hand is about the GMT, which uh, he wants to get a GMT. And we're going to address that in the next video. But thanks for watching. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let Alexander know which of these watches is your favorite. For me, I mean, it's a beautiful collection, but... The top picks, I would say, and I don't have any decisive favorite here, but I would say my top picks are the 16570, the 40 millimeter black dialed Explorer 2. Of course, it's got that sentimental value coming from your father who's no longer with us, and it's just a great wearable piece. And I also love the two tone sub, I love rotating bezels, and you know, I'm not much for two tone, but this is. A tritium dialed watch and so I imagine the patina on that tritium could look really cool with the two-tone just make sure you have that serviced at a place where you're not gonna lose those tritium hands great collection stay tuned for the next video we're gonna talk about what he should do regarding this forthcoming GMT thanks for watching take care and I'll see you next time